YouTube, team keep it clean, sit down, it's gonna be a little while. Uh, what's going on, uh, it's Engraven here with another video, and in this video we need to have ourselves a little meeting. Uh, we need to have a Ravens AA meeting, and, and when I say AA, I'm not referring to Alcoholics Anonymous, I am referring to two things that we need to see the Ravens change moving forward, two of the biggest changes we need to see moving forward with this team and that is accountability and adjustments. And in this video, we will speak about every coach, every coordinator, and even every player that I feel could step up. And it would be very beneficial to the Ravens as a franchise, as a team, and for their success moving forward. Now, uh, the first is John Harbaugh. Um, and I, I don't want anybody to get anything misconstrued or misunderstood when it comes to the way that I feel about John Harbaugh. Respect John Harbaugh. Love John Harbaugh for what he's done for this team. Uh, he gets the guys to fight. He, he gets the guys to really give it their all. This team, one thing, you can say a lot of things about John Harbaugh, but one thing that you can never, ever say is that the team quit on Harbaugh. You can never say that. No matter how many people are hurt, no matter how many people are out, no matter what the situation is, they never quit on John Harbaugh. And again, we all know that he is the ultimate players coach. The players love John Harbaugh. They love playing for him. And you rarely, 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 there's only been like two people that when they leave, they like, oh, I ain't like playing for him. I don't like that guy. We had our riff, this and that. Uh, but anyway, with John Harbaugh, accountability and adjustment. How does that apply to him? How can he get better at that? Well, in my opinion, it starts with the hiring process. Um, with John Harbaugh and just really with the Ravens team, period, I've been saying it for a while now that the philosophy, it has to be changed. It has to be adjusted. It has to be different. And that just has to be their approach to so many different things when it comes to this Ravens team. One of those is John Harbaugh with the hiring. We know John Harbaugh is responsible, usually responsible nine times out of 10 for the hiring of the offensive coordinators. Now, if John Harbaugh, for whenever the Ravens make their next move at offensive coordinator, I do not anticipate it being this offseason. It's not going to be this offseason. Greg Roman isn't going anywhere. That's fine. Okay. Well, John Harbaugh, you need to hold both your coordinators more accountable for their actions. You have to. You need to adjust your thinking when it comes to that. We know John Harbaugh, he's like, hey, Greg Roman, you do you, I'll step back. Hey, Wink Martindale, you do you, I'll step back. That's not working. It's not working. John Harbaugh, as the leader, as the head coach, he needs to realize like, hey, Greg Roman, what you're doing here, this is not working. Hey, look, what, we, what we're doing here, this was working. Let's stick with this. Hey, Wink, I love what you did here, but when you did this, it, it's just not good for, the, for this game right now. It's not good going against this team. We need to change this up. We need to fix this. So John Harbaugh, I feel like he needs to adjust when it comes to how he holds his guys accountable and then himself. One big adjustment with him would be in the whole, the, the, the hiring process itself. Moving forward, whatever happens with Greg Roman or Wink moving forward, even after this season, if John Harbaugh is still here, then the way that he goes about the hiring process has to be adjusted. He needs to do better at really getting the best man for the job and not getting a friend, not getting an old buddy, not getting an old coworker, not getting a family member, no, he needs to get the best man for the job. And uh, this is especially when it comes to offensive coordinator. Because, yeah, usually with defensive coordinator, um, the Ravens, they do a lot of promoting from within. Because that's where Wink came from. Wink, I believe, was the Ravens. He used to be their linebackers coach. But it would be wise of Harbaugh to just hire the best man for the job. And I know a lot of people talk about, oh, Harbaugh, he doesn't hire anybody that's a threat to his job. Now, I, I wouldn't expect somebody to do that. Like, hey, let, let me bring you on, even though I know you could take my job. But I, I, I've spoke to leaders before, to, to managers, 
And one of the things that they do, one thing that makes a great manager is somebody that is willing to hire somebody that they could see replace them in the future. And we know that Harbaugh, for everybody that he brings on, they are not people that he could see replace him in the future. And the one thing about it is, and it's not even like Harbaugh would necessarily be replaced by these guys because we've seen enough times when Harbaugh will bring somebody on it and they'll go somewhere else. They'll go be a coordinator somewhere else. They may be, go back to the college. They may go back to work with Jim. But we, we, we need to see people who are ascending and not descending. Harbaugh also needs to be held accountable himself. We look at this season and we look at, again, after the Super Bowl, in the Super Bowl, ultimate level of success. It was amazing. Those five years, us as Ravens fans, we were on top of the world. You couldn't tell us nothing, nothing. Playoffs, playoff wins, AFC championships, a lot of heartbreak. But in that five year period, in that fifth year, it, it ended the best way that it could possibly end holding that Lombardi trophy. And that was amazing. Amazing. That was also, what, nine years ago. Not that a team is going to win a Super Bowl every two, three years, well, minus the Patriots uh, or Brady, period. But not that a team besides them is going to win a Super Bowl every single year, not even every four years, even every five years. But you do want to see the team's best foot put forward. And we have had some teams that can compete. We've had some teams that could get the job done. We've had it. We had it in 2014. We had it in 2019, of course. We had it in 2020. Now, this year, of course, everybody got hurt. We, we understand that. But whenever I speak about John Harbaugh, it's not just about this year. And I feel like that's where so many people get it misunderstood. They think, oh, man, engraving when he talks about John Harbaugh. Oh, man, he's not he's not accounting all the injuries that we had. Did he forget about the injuries? Did he forget we had everybody hurt? It's not about that, my friends. It's about the way that I feel about this team overall moving forward. It's not about back then. It's about moving forward. Now, I've said it plenty of times, Harbaugh... In order for this team to really have the best success, in my opinion, Harbaugh doesn't even have to be fired. He doesn't have to be. But the philosophies have to change. They have to adapt. They have to adjust to their situation. They have to adjust to the league. They have to. And I feel like if, if Harbaugh can make that adjustment, that would be a huge change on his part, really on everybody's part. All right, cool. But if he can't make that adjustment, then I feel like the Ravens, okay, well, next man up. And it doesn't just apply to players. It would apply to the coach as well. So Harbaugh, again, he's still on the last, he's on the last year of his contract. There hasn't been any extension announced that as of right now, today, January 19th, 2022. We haven't heard of any extension, any extension talks, nothing like that. So Harbaugh got a lot to prove right now. And again, actions speak louder than words. You know, the Ravens, they absolutely adore Harbaugh. The staff, the players, all that. And I can understand why. But actions, him still on being on the last year of his deal, that says a lot more than any words that they could say about him could. Because that shows like, all right, hey, time is, time is up. This is it. What you going to do? That's why I really believe that they are going to let him play this thing out on the last year of his deal and see what stuff is looking like. Because as much as a lot of fans may not want to say it, as much as a lot of fans may not want to see it, I do feel like the Ravens, the front office, they are looking at John Harbaugh. They sure are. And they are thinking about the long term future. He's been here for a long time, long time. But the Ravens are certainly thinking about the future. There is no way that they aren't, especially when you got somebody like and it's, it's not just a random player on the last year of his deal. So, no, it, it, this is your head coach who has been here since 2008. He's been here for a long time, man. 
a long time. So we'll see what happens with that. And, and like I said before, Harbaugh is the ultimate players coach. They love him. Love, 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 love Harbaugh. The players love Harbaugh. But he is also not the end-all, be-all. He is not the only coach in the world. And I think, I know in a lot of times when people say, oh, man, Harbaugh, he, no. What, who, who's going to be better than Harbaugh? Well, who is going to be better than Billick? Huh? Who is going to be better than uh, Marcia Bro? Who is going to be better than those guys? Ravens have only had three head coaches in their existence, in their entirety. They've had three head coaches. And the last two that they picked ended up getting them Super Bowls. So I would think in the hiring process, I would think that the Ravens, they got that down packed. You would think that, right? You would think that when they move on from one coach, it, it's great. When they move on from a coach, they end up getting a Super Bowl. Then they, went up, when they moved on from another coach, they end up getting a Super Bowl. And one of the things that the, the coaches Billick and um, Harbaugh had in common was that they inherited some really good players, some generational talents. And on top of that, they also drafted some really good guys too. So if the Ravens were to move on from John Harbaugh, I feel like they would be just fine. Do they have to move on from Harbaugh to get a philosophy change? We'll see this year. We'll see this year because, again, everything is on the line right now for John. Everything. So I would hope that he would make the necessary adjustments and also hold himself accountable a lot more moving forward. Next, Greg Roman. Greg Roman is one. That, oh, man. Oh, boy. Greg Roman. Uh, so many Ravens fans. And actually, there's a, it's a lot of Ravens fans on the fence, on both sides of the fence. Some are like, hey, man, Greg Roman needs to go. Some are like, no, no, no. Greg Roman needs to stay. Greg Roman accountability and adjustments one of the biggest adjustments that he can make is inside the red zone situational play caller so many times and, and even not even just situational play calling but just play calling in general but definitely situational play calling there's something that we've been talking about so much so i know a lot of y'all have heard it before but inside the 20 when it's crunch time, when everything's on the line, it seems as if that's when Greg Roman just, he comes apart. And, and it's like with, um, with, with Greg Roman, too, in, in the biggest of the big situations, it's like, whoa, wait a minute, what, what, what's going on? Whether well, it's playoff time, uh, sometimes with these, some of these two-point conversions. Now, the one versus the Steelers, that, that was a nice one. That, that was a great play call. But that just execution left. I don't know if it was planned that they were going to leave T.J. Watt unblocked, um, but that just was executed sloppily. But the one there was the one uh, the the rollout, the rollout elim eliminating the whole left side of the field and focusing in on Mark Andrews. The rollout and and, and it's it's just it, it's that it's the situational play calling. It's just, it can be just the the use of players or the lack. Of use of players. We see so many times when a player will be hot. And, and it's not all on Greg Roman because the quarterback, they still got to throw that person the ball. Offensive line still got to block. Uh, wide receivers got to catch. Tight ends, etc. Players got to do their part too. And we'll talk about them in a little minute. But a lot of times with the play calling. And the, the situational play calling. And just the, the lack of being in the flow of the game. So many times we've seen where it's like, all right, oh, this defense, their weakness is this, but Greg Roman would do something that's opposite. Even when a defense has a weakness, they, Ravens may attack it, and Ravens may do, be doing a good job of attacking it for a while. Then Greg Roman will go do something else. And it's like, what, what is going on? I, I just, I don't get it. Why? What, what, is, what is the problem? What's not clicking? I don't understand. So Greg Roman needs to hold himself more accountable and realize like, hey, OK, I tried this. It's not working. If my, my plan A is not working. All right. I got to have a plan B because that's another thing. A lot of times it seems as if with Ravens, 
if their original plan ain't working, then it's like, oh, well, <laughs> what do we do from here? So Ravens have to make better adjustments and they need to make earlier adjustments. Oh, man, we saw that so much this season, especially at the beginning of the year where we saw like they have to do a better job of adjusting to the situation, helping out their quarterbacks. And whether that was Lamar, whether it was Tyler Huntley, whoever it may be, they got to get better at adjusting to the situation a lot earlier. We saw it this year where the Ravens, where the offense would be struggling the offensive line is struggling. Why is it that Greg Roman been our offensive coordinator since 2019? 19. So that's 2019, 2020, and 2021. Three years. Same starting quarterback. There's a lot of the offensive line has changed and some players have changed in and out. But 2019... Why do we not have a screen game? Why can we still not run screens? Why? What is that? And this is with a good or bad offensive line. It's just something that we don't do. Where are the, the and this, there can be so much simplicity. Sometimes I feel like Greg Roman almost overthinks the situation so many times. There can be success with simplicity. But the Ravens, they, they don't do that. Greg Roman doesn't do that. He spoke this offseason. He said it. He said it. We are going to have Lamar Jackson under center a lot more. We got a lot of plays for Lamar Jackson under center. Under center is not the pistol. Under center is not shotgun. Under center is directly under the center. Lamar taking a snap from underneath uh, Bradley Bozeman's behind That's under center What do we see that like Three or four times Maybe You, you can't just talk your talk And then another thing you, This is why he gotta hold himself accountable You can't just talk the talk But not back it up Oh man we, we got a lot of plays in the vault We got a whole lot of plays in the vault Where were they I remember One maybe two because was the flea flicker after the vault comment or before? I think it might have been before. But regardless, I, I remember. So, so two, two vault plays. Because there was the one that I loved and I never saw it again. Never saw it again. There was the one that I loved where they faked it. They faked a little end around to Devin Duvernay. Um, so he came, he came over. Lamar act like he put it in his chest. Then took it out. So he faked it to him. And then Devontae Freeman was here and he handed it off to Devontae Freeman. And the design, it was just so beautiful. It was lovely. Never saw it again. Never saw it again. Ever. So it's like you, you got to hold yourself accountable to your word. Be a man of your word. Let your yes mean yes. Now, with Wink. Oh, with Wink. And again, we know with him too, just like with Greg Roman and John Harbaugh, yeah, a lot of guys were hurt. We got to adjust to the situation. But with Wink, he got to adjust to the situations a lot faster. Now, hold yourself accountable. Now, I think Wink did hold himself accountable with his, his comment before the season about sacks being overrated. Now, we know that Wink's scheme, for some reason, the, the sacks just don't get there. We, we just don't get a bunch of sacks with guys under wing scheme. Now, I, I do have some things that I feel could change that and could help that, could help Wink in that manner, but we'll talk about that in another video. But as far as Wink, Don Martindale, adjustments. A lot of times this year, it was my biggest complaint that with Wink, um, we knew guys were hurt. But even when Marlon Humphrey was still in, before a lot of guys even went out, um, he was he had been getting toasted. Uh, he had been struggling this year. This year was definitely a down year for Marlon Humphrey. He did make some plays, but he struggled a lot this year, a lot more than usual. And could it be because Marcus Peters wasn't on the other side? I think that had a whole lot to do with it. But Marlon Humphrey, he struggled. Anthony Averett, he had some good games, and he had some really bad games too. But there, there would be such a lack of adjustment to helping your guys out. You will see these cornerbacks struggling and you will still continue to leave them on islands. 
Ravens' pass defense was terrible this year. Yes, so many people were hurt. Their pass defense was terrible. But you know what's crazy? You know what just didn't make any sense to me at all? Why did it look like, and let me know if I'm wrong, please do. But why did it look like the defense played better down the stretch when so many guys were out? Anthony Averett out, Marlon Humphrey out, obviously Marcus Peters out, Deshaun Elliott out. Why did it look like a lot of times the defense played better down the stretch with so many guys being out? Because Wink finally, finally made so many different adjustments. He changed so much stuff down the stretch that we wish he would have done a lot earlier. Wink has to make quicker adjustments. Wink, is he a bad defensive coordinator? No, he's not a bad defensive coordinator. But again, he needs to be held accountable. He has to be. Because they've... The, and there have been times, too, when um, and, and I feel for him in this case where the defense is doing a good job. They are holding the teams out, but it, then it's on the offense because they don't be getting nothing going. So the, the, the defense will have, will have been out there for forever and ever and ever and be holding it down. Then at the very end, it's like, oh, OK, we can't do it no more. Then they have a collapse. They have a late game collapse. They have a late, late game meltdown. But then again, it is on you. That's on you. That's on you as a defensive court. So he would have to be held accountable. He would have to be. And it's tough. It's, it's, these are some tough jobs. Being a head coach, being a coordinator of an NFL football team. Ooh, that's tough. That's extremely tough. So, but these guys, they, they've had their positions and they've had their positions for a while because they have reached a level of success. But these are just my opinions on how I feel like they could reach another level of success. Now, moving on, Eric DaCosta. Eric DaCosta, he's been the GM since, what, the 2019 season, I believe. And overall, he, he's had some great things that he's done, and he has some things that he needs to improve on, too. Now, the great things that he's done, I feel like he does a really good job of making this roster. Um, he, especially this year, even though we literally lost everybody, um, but he has done a good job of making the roster. Now, where I, where I feel like he could make uh, a few adjustments... The biggest to me with Eric DaCosta is draft picks. And it's not just a simple two-word answer with draft picks. It's a lot deeper than that, in my opinion. Now, it's a couple of things. Now, his, the, the, the back-end drafting, it, it hasn't been so pretty. The, the, depths, the depth of his drafts, it, it, it hasn't been so pretty so far. The impact of his drafts, uh, it, it, overall, it has not been pretty so far. There's been a lot more misses than hits, but and we know the Ravens, they love their draft picks. They covet draft picks. They want all the draft. If the Ravens could pick 32 times in each round, they would. If it was possible, if they could trade with literally every single team and get 32 picks for seven rounds, they would do it. They would because, you know, they love them draft picks. But my thing with that and we know Eric DaCosta is aggress an aggressive GM. He tries, but that's the thing right there. We always hear about tries. Now, there have been some successions, of course, with Marcus Peters, him trading for Marcus Peters, and that was huge. Him trading for Calais Campbell, and that was huge. Him trading away Kerr Vedvik. So somebody actually, him getting a draft pick for a kicker slash punter that we know he wasn't going to keep. Like, how do you do that? Teams could just wait it out and be like, all right, they about to cut him anyway. But for him to get a draft pick for him, and he wasn't even going to keep him, that's big. That's huge. But with all the, uh, the, the trading, we hear so much almost. And usually when we hear about almost, I know a lot of teams, be, oh, well, this, this person, the, this team didn't want to trade him in the AFC. They, were, they, they didn't want this player to be in the conference. Okay. But a lot of times, too, is that the Ravens, they don't want to give up. It's something that they don't want to give up, and it's usually a draft pick. It's usually the draft pick. I feel like their, their love for draft picks, sometimes it can be a little bit overrated. And what I mean when I say that is that, I, and of course, you know, like with the draft, the, the more times you got to swing, the more chances you get, you, you get to hit. The more swings you take, the more opportunities you, you get for a home run. And that is true. That's the law of averages. More, the more attempts you take at something, the more chances you have at succeeding. But 
how much real value is placed on success for of these draft picks. Because think about this. Hollywood Brown, for example, 2019 first round draft pick. Patrick Queen, 2020 first round draft pick. Rashad Bateman and Adafi Away, 2021 first round draft picks. All of those guys saw significant time on the field. And the Ravens were extra invested in them because of where they drafted them at. They were first round picks. Now, again, the more chances you have to swing, the more chances that you can hit a home run. But if, say for instance, you, 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 you up to bat and it's like, all right, it's, it's the bottom of the ninth and your team, y'all already up and you, you don't got nothing to swing for. Are you going to put that same effort into hitting a home run? No, you're not. Because the game's already over. And it's the same way that I feel with the draft. The, all these late draft picks that they always accumulate, they're not as invested in them as they are these first round draft picks, second round, third round, whatever, as the higher draft picks. So they're like, all right, we're, we're, we're technically swinging and we hope for something. But okay, if it doesn't work out, uh, oh well. This is why I feel like the, the, these, all these draft picks can, can be overrated a lot of times. And we know if the Ravens were to like move up in a draft, we know it's going to cost more money. But still, it's also going to cost you more of an investment. You're going to really be invested in this player and really do your best to get the most out of this player. If this player is a, a fifth round pick, a sixth round pick, a seventh round pick, and that's no disrespect to anybody that's drafted. There's no disrespect to them at all. But... The Ravens are just simply not going to invest in those players as much as they would a higher pick guy. And we know a lot of it has to do with money, but a lot has to do with draft status and whatnot, too. So this is why I would I would rather instead of them taking 50 shots. I would rather them take 25, but those 25 shots, they really like trying to make them count. That's what I, I, I feel like they should do. But that's just my opinion. But yeah, besides that, Eric DaCosta's been doing good. But with the draft picks and the draft and all, all that and the, just the, the, the hoarding of the draft picks, that's why I feel like he can make an adjustment. Now, players, Lamar Jackson. We're not going to go through every single player because it's just it's, it's too many. Lamar Jackson, that's your franchise quarterback. Now for him, Accountability. You know he got accountability, but he got to show it too. And he's got to make the right adjustments on the field. Now, we know a lot has to do with play calling, but a lot has to do with execution as well. What Lamar Jackson needs to do better is get rid of that ball. Get rid of the ball. And we know that, and again, a lot has to do with play calling, but we know that he can get rid of the ball. We know he can. And again, the, the best example of it would probably be that Colts game. Oh, boy, there were so many plays where, especially when, when that up-tempo start rolling, oh, yeah, that, that's him all day. That, that's quick pace, fast-paced Lamar Jackson in that up-tempo offense. That no huddle, oh, boy, that's, that's him all day. Greg Roman, we, we tried to tell you earlier, but he's like, oh, no, we don't. Anyway, Lamar Jackson has to do a better job of taking care of the ball. He has to do a better job of uh, making some better decisions. Now, we know he got so much trust for Mark Andrews, and we can understand why. And Mark Andrews got so much trust for him. You know, Mark Andrews, look at that little $54 million contract, and like, oh, Lamar, thank you so much. I love you. But it, it can't just be Mark Andrews and Hollywood. It can't. Lamar has to do a better job of seeing the field. He, he has to. Because there have been opportunities that he's missed. There certainly were opportunities that he's missed, and even when he had time. Now, when he hasn't had time behind that offensive line, okay, I don't blame you, but there have been times when he's, he's just missed people, like straight up. He's missed them. And there have been times when he has made just some very some bad decisions this year. And with, with Lamar Jackson, um, I would just love an adjustment for him to make is to really get a firm grip of this offense. And I don't mean, oh, well, get, you got to know the playbook because he obviously does, but really take control 
of this off command this or let it be known like hey this is what y'all need to do and, and get with it and quick there's a lot that i don't know when it comes to getting the play calls in so i'm not sure if uh because that but that whole thing and that that's something else with greg roman with greg that has got to go it's got to go with all the, the the play calls being so late i don't know i, I don't know what the process for that is I don't understand the entire algorithm when it comes to that but that is something that holds this team back and then now I got to go backwards now I got to go backwards to, to Harbaugh again with the adjustments and the accountability for Ravens we see this too often 12 men on the field we, we, oh, we see that too much that has got to, that has got to go but we see that too many times man 12 men on the field, illegal shift, illegal motion, delay a game, wasted timeouts because they weren't about to get the playoff in time. I don't know what's going on in practice because when you practice something so many times, repetition just helps the process go that much smoother. But I, I just, I, coaching has got to get rid of these silly penalties that to where the Ravens end up being their own worst enemy. Because it's one thing if the play call is good and, and then, say for instance, a, the ball is dropped or it's overthrown or you get sacked or somebody fumbles or something. That's one thing. But if you can't even get the play off, if you fighting with yourself before the play's even started, that's terrible, man. That's terrible. And we've seen that so many times. They got to fix that. And then I go back to the defensive side of the ball. The, there seems to be, I don't know if it's because the, the, the scheme is just overly complicated or what. But you see so many plays when the players, they, they talking to each other. They having these long, drawn out conversations right before the ball is about to be snapped by the, by the opposing team's offense. And it's like a lot of guys just seem to not know what to do. They just seem to be lost out there so many times. Like, oh, what, 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 I, what do I do? Where do I go? Where do I go? And to me, it would seem as if they, have, they maybe have too much responsibility. So they think, oh, do I go there? Do I, go? do I drop back? Do I blitz? Do I, what, what do I do? So that's on Wink as well. So it's just... Those are the, the, the main things that I feel would just, if, if the Ravens can adjust those things. Cause like I said, we know that this coaching staff, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, I'm sure that they're all going to stay intact. And it's okay, cool. Well, let's get better. Let's improve. Hey, we know what we do great at, and that's great. But we also know what we could get better at, so let's do that. That's, that's the biggest thing I want to see. I want to see... People hold themselves accountable and people be willing to make adjustments. Being stubborn is not good for anybody. No matter where you are, no matter your, your whatever, it's never good for anybody. So we know that these coaches, they got these there's certain characteristics about them. They got the certain things that they do. We get that. And they've been doing it certain ways for years. Cool. We get that. But a true leader is somebody that's willing to make changes they're willing to adjust to the situation and they're willing to hold themselves accountable team keep it clean i love y'all i appreciate y'all and just like i hope ravens won't be next year when it comes to being in the playoffs and even in the super bowl too i'm out you see my boy he like gotta made it gotta made it boy that's my homie ain't that right and graven right and graven Shout out to Graven.